right, here we have a uh, the vape electronic ignition system, and uh, here we have the uh, the regulator. Uh, I guess I assume it's a solid state regulator, and we have the ignition control unit. There you go, and then we have the stator uh, and the sensor. This has three plates. There's a mounting plate. You can see that or not there's a mounting plate and a plate that holds the stator and then the the stator bolts on top of that and then we have the coil or what they call the power dynamo and then we have the the rotor and here's the ignition uh, spark plug wire for the uh, the coil and got the uh, instruction manual here and it's it's very good but uh, uh, the products are made in um, the Czech Republic and the translation from English from their language to English is a little sketchy but hopefully I can uh, work my way through it and figure it out all right here we go All right, so here's the uh, the ignition system, what I've got installed so far, and what it consists of is there are three aluminum rings that hold the system together. The first ring attaches to the cases, that holds it all together. Then the second ring holds the sensor in, and the third ring holds the stator. I don't know if you can see the little uh, brass rings in there or not. And so that holds the system on. And then the next thing you have to do, you have to, here's my screwdriver, have to find top dead center. So you move it around, uh, you move the, the engine till you find top dead center. And I did that by using a screwdriver and marking the fins on the valve cover. You can see the little red marks there. And um, I found top dead center. Once I did that, you come back and your flywheel is off at this point. So you put the flywheel on, but you see this A here, and there's a corresponding line that you need to line up with that. You see a little knob sticking out on that center sensor. You have to take and line that line up with the back edge of the um, sensor. And once that's lined up, then you put your bolt in, and tighten it down. And then you run the wires. Now the wires come out, originally, the original wires come out this little hole here. But these wires are, I can get the one set of wires through, but there's a um, another set, these two little wires here that also follow it through. And it's not big enough. So either I have to enlarge this hole which I'm not sure I want to do, or I have to route this wire, but make sure it stays away from the Kickstarter gear here. And so I can route it and maybe attach it so it's not going to be interfering with anything and it'll come out back of the side cover. And then, uh, then I have to mount the other parts and then we'll go over there. And here we have the coil and um, the vape coil and so what I want to do is I want to mount it right about here I'm thinking right there um, that's where the original coil mounted um, then we can go over to the control unit here's the control unit and then um, that I think I want to place about here, I'm going to change hands with the phone here, which is right in between the seat and the gas tank. And because the wires are kind of short, uh, they have to reach to the coil. Um, either I have to find a new location for the coil or mount the control unit around here. All right, and that brings us to the uh, regulator. And then the regulator... I think I'm going to end up doing is um, making a bracket and then mounting it around here, this area here. But I do, I, I will need to um, 
clean off all this powder coating. You know, have to make sure it's got a clean, clean area for a ground and make sure it gets grounded well. And then also up here where the coil will go, I need to make sure that that's uh, nice and cleaned off and have a good, good ground. All right, so the other thing um, I did is I, I bought some shocks from eBay and um, they're, they're, my original ones are really rough shape. I thought about trying to restore them, but from what I've learned from other people, they say, yeah, just replace them. Uh, and so I found these on eBay. Um, they have a, the ones I ordered had a chrome spring. So it's black with chrome, kind of like the original, but they don't have those. So I ended up just staying with the black and black. And then the other thing I did was um, I put the chain guard on and then I put a, this is all temporary, but I use the Allen bolt here and then the traditional regular hex head here. I'm just not sure which route I want to go with yet. If anyone has any comments, let me know. Um, you know, the bike is going to be kind of like a Restro mod. I want a little better suspension and a better ignition system, but something you could ride. You know, you could ride to bike shows or car shows and something that's reliable and, and uh, you know, a better ignition system and something you can get on and start up and not have to worry about uh, having a weak ignition system. So uh, that's the project right now, and um, I will be back. All right. Uh, the other thing I got accomplished is I was able to pick up the uh, fuel tank and fender from the body shop. They did a beautiful job on that. Let's see if I can get some good photo. Anyway, they did a nice job recreating the original paint scheme. And the fenders turned out real nice, too. And so um, I do have the decals. Um, I got them from Moto Italia, Italia, Moto Italia. Uh, I got the uh, the SS sticker for the tank and the top, and then the two uh, Harley Davidson stickers for the sides. So anyway, I just want to show those. All right, so I put the decals on. We have the uh, the SS decal here, and then the. Harley Davidson decals on that side. Then here's the other side. Turned out real nice. I'm very happy with it. All right, that's it for now.